This episode of the Moms Network is brought to you by co-sponsors Belgio's Catering and Dieta's Bakery. Welcome to the Moms Network. Today we are joined by my co-host Patty Minglin and two special mom guests, Linda Whitaker and Katie Matar. We are chatting weddings and the role of mother of the bride or mother of the groom. My boys are 18 and almost 17, so hopefully I have a few more years before I find myself in this role, but maybe I can pick up a few tips along the way. Let's go around and share a little more about ourselves and where we are in the process of planning or already having a wedding. <laughs> Um, I have three children. My oldest is a daughter and she is getting married in uh, just a few weeks. So we're like in it, like the <laughs> thick of it all. And I will say that um, it's a lot different than 28 years ago when I got married. So I've learned a whole lot of things and I feel like I'm hoping the stuff that I'm learning with her, I can use with my boys, which it'll probably be a little different my role, but yep. I like that I am kind of learning a with her along the way. Yeah. How about you, Katie? I have three children. Um, my oldest just got married in June, and my second got married last August, and then the third one is 20s in college, so nothing on the, the burner. <laughs> um, and just different experiences, because the daughter, you know, is the mother of the bride, and then my son, you know, they organized the whole wedding. So, um, yeah, it's both beautiful. Different, but beautiful. Awesome. Yeah. And um, I have three children as well. My daughter was married um, this uh, a year ago in August, um, big fancy wedding in Chicago. My son, unfortunately, was supposed to be married in June, but didn't mm -hmm. um, because of COVID. So we have to um, plan for a July wedding. Um, mother the groom role will be different, obviously, but just as exciting. And then my youngest one, um, like Katie um, and, and you as well, um, on the burner, on the back burner. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I have a little bit of time between. <laughs> well, to start off, why don't we talk about when you first found out they're engaged? What was the first step that you kind of rolled right into? Um, well, I was like overwhelmed. So I just didn't do anything because that's what I do when I'm overwhelmed. I just don't do anything. And so I'm like, let's just <laughs> let's just take a break for a minute. And again, you had I got married 28 years ago. And so I am, you know, I got married in a small town where we knew everybody. And I thought, well, can't we just make three phone calls like my dad did and a wedding <laughs> produced it. So um, the first thing that we did was really sit, I sat down with my daughter and we just kind of went through like, what was she looking for? Like, what is yeah. she thinking? Because it's easy, I think, at least for me, it's easy to jump in and plan the wedding I have in my head. And I had to kind of take the reins back and be like, okay, let me let her talk first, which is super hard for me. <laughs> so I did that and then we just kind of, everyone told me to set a budget first. I'll be the first to tell you I didn't do that. <laughs> Like I do as I say, not as I do, and I say that because it would be really good if I did. Like to say, this is how much money we're gonna spend and then let her decide where she wants that money or in her and her, her fiance. It's his wedding too, I got it, I got it. <laughs> but we would let them decide how they would spend that amount. Like if they really wanted more on the venue than on food or whatever it is, then they would do that. We just did not do that appropriately. <laughs> Maybe you have to do it on the back end. It. Right, we're doing it on the back end. I, I highly recommend you do it on the front end. <laughs> That's it. Katie, how about yourself? Well, I asked her, what kind of wedding do, would you like? And she said, I'd just like to go off and get married. I'm like, oh, well, not so fast, because we have a, a big family, and, <laughs> and you know, we want to celebrate together. And you know, so she's like, I just wanted a little, like a little church wedding. So we talked her into the family wedding, the church, you know, and it was about 240 people. Wow. And, um, and then we had to convince her the other way. So, but um, yeah. You had to convince her the other way. Yeah, well, after, after COVID, oh, yeah, yeah. everything changed. So, yeah. so she went from that and then she got excited and then we had to go back to that. 
Oh, oh, my, oh my goodness. Yeah, it's been yeah, a different wedding season, hasn't it? Life hasn't exciting. It yeah. yeah, for sure. Right. Linda, how about yourself? So, unlike <laughs> Patty, um, <laughs> as soon as my um, daughter and her fiance got engaged, I got out the three ring binder <laughs> and made web yeah. apps I love and it. just started inserting different venues <laughs> and meals and, um, you know, all the different um, items that we needed to plan the wedding. We started with the guest list. Um, we tried to start with a budget, but um, and I was very good making a spreadsheet with a budget. That soon, you know, went away, and then I was putting <laughs> money into different categories, and um, you know, but um, it all worked out for her. Um, but it was her vision um, based on my binder, um, <laughs> and, and and it was the wedding that they wanted, not the vision that I had. Right. But in the end, it was you know combined yeah. a combined vision. But we started with the venue and how many guests they were going to have, and it was about two uh, about 180 people. So mm -hmm. it was fairly large. Mm -hmm. That so. is so. I want to run out and get binders right now. I'm really late to the game with them, but I feel like I can just shove everything in and say, <laughs> "Look, look at my binder. Look right. how organized." Or you hire us. Linda. Yeah. Right. Can bring right. I will just take one you. of your binders and pretend <laughs> well, that I've been funny, planning. Funny. Um, we did have a day of wedding planner that came with one of the venues. That's and, what we have. Um, when I showed up with the binder, she just laughed and said, my job is done. <laughs> you have you literally this. done what I am supposed to be doing with you. But <laughs> a I'm, little shout out to our wedding planner, day of wedding planner. That's not going to happen with me. I will not show up. You have a job <laughs> you to are do. Gonna be busy. You are going to be busy <laughs> from the minute we come in to the minute we leave. I'm going to fall probably more in Patty's camp than the binder camp. <laughs> yeah. And God love you for the blind. You know what? Sarita would be great with a binder. Oh, yeah. One of our other co-hosts. She's yeah. very detail-oriented. I should have just called Which is awesome. Her. I'm going to call like Frank from right. uh, Father, Father of the, of the bride. bride, right? I'd be like, just kind of do this for me. That'd be great. Right. Where do I write the check to? Right. <laughs> Yeah, my daughter was 29, so she was, very, I mean, she was older and mm -hmm. a little bit, I mean, very organized. Mm -hmm. So she was the binder, mm -hmm. binder girl. And mine's tw mine was 27, um, but I just wanted to have everything in its place, in a place where I could go to and make sure that everything was covered. So yeah. there was no nothing surprises. left. Yeah. There still were surprises. There were a lot of surprises, but um, oh. yeah. Great. How about um, <laughs> wedding dress shopping? Was that a fun experience, a long experience, a short experience? I feel like Linda and I are going to have two totally different answers to this. <laughs> no, you're closer to me. Because <laughs> yeah, like I, totally I, yeah. yeah. um, I, we went wedding dress shopping in January, which I thought was so ridiculous. Like we had like a whole year and I'm like, what are we doing? But now I realize you really do need to go dress shopping early because it takes like months and months and months to get it in. Um, I was so overwhelmed. Like we walked in to the bridal shop and I just was like, okay, I'm just going to go sit in the car and you tell me when you've narrowed it down. But then when we got into it, oh, it was really fun. And what I loved is the dress she ended up choosing, I knew it the minute she walked out with that dress on. I, and it sounds very, you know, this is say yes to the dress kind of moment, but it really was. Like mm. she... She just radiated in it, and she looked like that. Like I knew she was going to say that was her dress before she said it, and that like that made everything else about the experience. Like that moment, I would never take back. Like that was such a great moment. It's awesome. I just I'm expecting Linda to say <laughs> I went. No, in. I mean it was the same thing. We we did go to a lot of different shops, a lot of appointments. Um, we had my younger daughter with us, just, so it was just the three of us. It wasn't a big entourage. So there wasn't any yes or no or rating any of the dresses. Um, she didn't want that. Neither did we. Um, but when she did walk out with her dress, um, unfortunately my youngest one wasn't there with us. But when she did walk out with her dress, we knew. We knew, she yeah. knew, there were tears. Um, it was a long process. We started early as well, um, but it was such a fun mother-daughter bonding yeah, and even with my, my other daughter, so. Um, and she was beautiful. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Very different. Um, when, <laughs> yeah, I'm not the, you know, the big shopper, so she actually ordered hers online. She showed me a picture of it and she said, this is so beautiful, mm -hmm. and she ordered it. Um, and had it altered, and she looked amazing. Yeah, that is uh, so quick it fit her, and that was it's so simple. When it's I so got simple. married, um, we had just moved to the Naperville area, and I didn't, I didn't really have any big group of friends or anything like that. I went by myself, and I remember I tried on two dresses, and the second dress just fit me like a glove, 
and it was simple and a classic. And so I called my dad and I was like, Dad, I was like, I think I found the dress. And he said, all right, let me sit down. How much is it? <laughs> and I said, it's $400. He's like, buy it right now. <laughs> So I was a, a very quick and right. easy uh, dress uh, shopper as well. I will say it is was more, I mean, it's expensive. I mean, I mean, that's one area that I think I didn't really think about when I started planning mm -hmm. because my aunt was a professional seamstress. She made my dress, and I did mm -hmm. not really think about the cost of that. And but And we went over our budget. We adjusted. If I we had went, a spreadsheet, we, we stayed we went, oh, under. See? <laughs> Surprise oh, for us. Good. We went over a little bit. That's like one area where I thought that's where the money is worth it. Yeah. For for me. Yeah. Um, did any of you during the weddings or planning process have like a blunder or a? I know for me, my limo never showed up. I was downtown Chicago, and so. They called us to come down, and we're like, all right, we'll be down in about five minutes. So me and my wedding party go down, no limo. And we're waiting and waiting, and finally I looked at the concierge, I'm like, did you see a limo here? And he was like, yeah, he was just here. And I didn't have a phone, I didn't have a cell phone, right? How many, uh, many years it was. It turns out that another bride and bridal party came down. Oh my gosh. The same time, <laughs> sees a limo, gets in the limo, the, the limo away. driver takes him to Navy Pier because I'm getting married on the Odyssey, and the bride says, "Why are we at the Navy Pier?" <laughs> oh so, my gosh! So any in during wedding specifically, any like big massive mistakes that you had to figure out on the fly? Um, I, th I ours went off without a hitch. Hers went yeah. off with, without a hitch. Um, but at the end of the night, we did not order or have enough. Um, transportation to get the guests back to the hotel. We didn't really plan on the guests who weren't staying at the hotel to take the bus oh. back to the, the hotel that everyone, everyone else was at. So we had a lot of people crowded into the, the bus. Um, and then unfortunately we had four of my dear friends um, standing on the curb oh. as the bus pulled away and they were just waving. Oh, no. <laughs> and I felt so badly. But we had such a fun ride back with the bridal party and you know all the late night guests. Um, and they Ubered over and they met us. Um, so they're my dear friends of 40 years. You're still friends. Right. We're Today. still friends. Okay. But just I have that picture in my head of them literally literally just la waving. Oh like, my goodness. We were here for the fun, but right. now we're left. Yeah. Well at the end of so the limo's not there. And I don't know, I can't even call my parents. I like I I so finally I just hailed a cab. And we piled into the back of this relatively dirty cab, and my sister looks at me and goes, don't freak out. I go, I'm not freaking out. This is a story I will tell someone. Yeah. Right, right. You know, Everybody like, this needs is, this yeah. is story. I go, just don't tell dad. Don't right. tell dad that this is how I started my wedding experience. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's time for a quick break. We'll be right back with more from the Moms Network. Stay tuned. Wearing my mask is just part of my routine now, just like wearing my seatbelt. Wearing a mask should be just as routine as brushing your teeth. Wearing a mask for me has become as routine as that first cup of coffee in the morning. As routine as checking my email. I grab my mask every morning just like I grab my car keys. Wearing a mask has been just as routine as putting on your shoes in the morning. Wearing a mask has become as routine as going on a daily walk. Just as routine as having dinner. Wearing a mask is just as routine as having story time with my kids. So make it part of your routine. Please mask up, Naperville. NCTV17.com is the best place for you to stay up to date on your neighborhood happenings. Get your local news and sports all on the go by signing up for our daily news update. Naperville Community Television, keeping you informed.
proud to call Naperville our hometown, where you can enjoy simple pleasures, such as a stroll along the river walk or the excitement of a Friday night football game. It's where families can raise their children and plant their roots for generations to come. And so we're proud to be the city's nonprofit television station, keeping residents connected and informed through video storytelling on air and online. We ask that you continue to watch and share the stories about this wonderful town we call home. This episode of the Moms Network is brought to you by co-sponsors Belgio's Catering and Dieta's Bakery. Welcome back to the Moms Network as we talk about weddings and planning. Um, I know this year has been a very different year for many weddings um, as we've had our COVID pandemic that we needed to navigate. Um, how has COVID affected your wedding planning or even put off a wedding or things like that? Um, so I was the mother of the bride um, previously with my daughter and this year was supposed to be the mother of the groom, um, which I was really looking forward to planning different aspects of a wedding. And unfortunately, they had to cancel their wedding from June, mm. um, postponed it for about a year, um, mm. actually more than a year, to July of next year. Um, they will have been engaged by the time they get married for more than three years. Wow. So it's wow. a long time in coming. Um, they had to wait through uh, both sisters getting married. So um, <laughs> when they get married, I think there's just going to be a big hallelujah um, <laughs> that they have finally gotten married. Right. So. Big exclamation right. point yes. on the end of a long yes. story. Yes. Huh? yes. <laughs> How about you, Katie? Okay, so she um, was supposed to get married in June, and then COVID hit, and she said, well, maybe we'll postpone it a few months. We moved it to August. And then as we were you know, coming into April, May, she's like, nothing's changing. We moved it back to June. Um, limited, very small in the church. It was just, um, just a little strange. You know, you're at your daughter's wedding and you're wearing a mask yeah. and, you know, and you can't sit next to your family even though you drove there together. Um, it's just those are little uh, strange things. But throughout the day, there were little uh, moments, beautiful moments. So afterwards, we went to um, the Ivy in Wheaton and outside on Hale Street, they've closed um, the street for all the, uh, the restaurants and bars and things like that. There's some tents out there, and they had an orchestra playing. So we finished our dinner, and the dinner was very small. It was my daughter and her new husband, his parents, my husband and I, and my son and his wife and my other son. But we couldn't even sit together at the, at the dinner afterwards. We were separated. So all these little you know, things. And then we were leaving, and the owner of the Ivy said, well, why don't you have your first dance? And they went out and they danced in front of all these people who were outside. It was a beautiful day and it was magical. It was Aww. so, and I was like, thank you, God. That was just so wonderful. So that was your exclamation point. That was yes. my exclamation yes. point. Yeah. yeah. And then afterwards, we just, we gathered at his parents' house in their backyard. And they're off of the uh, prairie pass. So it was all wooded and they put mm. beautiful lights in the trees. Mm. And it was just family, just a very small group of us. So, you know, it's such a testament to, um, making lemonade out of lemons, yeah. right? And yeah. and being able to, them dancing with an orchestra in front of all these people never would have happened, yeah. right. right? And to have that moment and instead of always focusing on the, well, we couldn't do that, we couldn't right. do that, which is a shame and something to kind of right. have to grieve through that yeah. process. Um, sometimes there's little moments that come out that never would have happened otherwise. Yeah. So that's, made a, that's made a, a beautiful memory. That's really. a great story. And that's where, I mean, we're still in planning. And so, of course, we're planning. We have COVID plan A, plan B, plan C. <laughs> like, what's going to happen? We've already narrowed down our guest list to a smaller amount so we could do social distancing in the venue. But we also have that plan of what if we go back and we mm. have to have less than 50 people or... And, and it is, it's, it's, and it's, you know, for the mom, well, for me, anyway, it's managing my daughter's emotions and her expectations as well as my own. And that, like stories like that, yeah. oh, like that just makes me so happy because it's, it's going to be magical. And I mm -hmm. think, and one of you had said this before about, um, when we were talking off camera about it's not planning for the wedding, it's planning for a marriage. Right. And that, like in this moment of time, you got to keep that at the at the center right. of everything you do, yeah. and it's going to be those pick up on those beautiful right. magical moments that aren't anything like you thought Cause, were going to be. Because the day sure. comes and goes, but the marriage is forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like when you focus all that on the cake and the flowers, and and, the, and then don't focus on each other. What yeah. good is it after a few years? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, it's I, the magical moments that take place 
in between the cake cutting and in between, you know, the getting ready, mm -hmm. that it's the tender moments right. that mean mm -hmm. the most. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and another part of watching your child get married is having them transition to a life on their own. Now, many kids, you know, live together before they get married or, or they're already out of the house before they're married. But it is a it, it creates a new scenario in your family where your son or daughter now has someone else in their life that technically is their more primary family. So can you speak to that of how you feel you might feel? Because I know the wedding hasn't <laughs> happened yet. It, you know. I've always said this to my kids, when they become adults, I just want them to be happy, healthy, productive members of society. Right. <laughs> and whatever they do to do those three things, I will support. Um, and when my daughter first started dating Stephen, um, one of the things I just thought about him from the beginning was he brought out a better version of her. Like, I love her and everything about her, but she was even a better version of herself around him. So having him be a part of our family is, is really exciting, but it's also different. You know, it's we jokingly said when we went out to dinner not too long ago with my three kids, and we said it's the original three. You know, it's the, orig it's the original Mingland Five, and because mm -hmm. we're never going to have that again. There's always going to be another person. And as it, it is weird, like it does make you kind of stand and think, wow, time really goes quickly. <laughs> like kids go from little to big mm -hmm. very quickly. Yeah. But I'm just, I'm so happy that she has this person that makes her feel good about herself and that makes her a better version of her. Mm -hmm. That's right. great. Yeah, Brian is uh, just compliments Raya so much. And then my son, Anthony, his wife, Melanie, I mean, to see them so happy and joyful and, you know, making each other laugh and, and being there for each other. Um, so during COVID, Anthony had Melanie because they were already married and Rhea was still engaged. And so she said, I can't wait to get married so I could be, you know, with him. She's like, I feel so isolated. Mm. So, yeah, it's, um, I'm just grateful, really grateful. So, awesome. yeah, so my daughter and her new husband, while they were venue shopping or venue, you know, looking at different venues, um, there was a, a couple very emotional moments and I jumped up to comfort her or to just reassure her that everything would be fine. And instead of me being her comfort, um, her now husband, Jason, um, went over there and they, they, went, they went on for, you know, they went for a walk and calmed each other down. And it was at that moment that I knew okay, this is right, this is, this is what's going to happen, they're good for each other, they're going to be each other's emotional support. Right. Mm -hmm. And I will always be the parent, the right. mother-in-law, but now they need to lean on each other. So it was very endearing to see him just step up and just, which he should, yeah. and right. just be there for her. Um, and my son and his um, fiance, they just got a dog. So to see them, um, as everyone else in COVID got a dog, right. to see them interacting and taking this little puppy and raising this little puppy, um, they're just so cute together. So um, I think that they both picked exactly the person that they were supposed to spend the rest of their life with. Right. So that's, yeah. that's great. And that's what you hope for, right? right. Yeah. Think about all the different phases of motherhood from the first send off to kindergarten, right? Where you're not gonna be with them for the first time. I remember we used to live um, in Tallgrass and we lived right across the street from Fry Elementary School. So when Christopher started kindergarten, Nick was Nick's only 14 months younger. And I remember him leaving and Nicholas is hugging him going, I'm just gonna miss you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and Christopher's just like, buddy, I'll be back in like oh, four goodness. hours. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, we took him across the street and I, I don't know, I have like a glitch in my brain where I don't cry at things like that. I, I'm just like, I'm so proud of you. Like, I'm yeah. so proud of you. Like, you're, you're doing what you're supposed to do. And then off to middle school and then off to high school, right? And then college if they're going away for college. And um, a wedding certainly, like we talked about that explanation point, puts an explanation point in many cases of like, wow, you're like, you're like a full-blown mm -hmm. adult, right. you know? Yeah. And so can you speak to the fact of feeling of like, wow, I think I did a good job, right? Yeah. I hmm. think, I think, you know, can you speak to that a little bit? You, you do. Like, I'm always the parent that never wants to put too much credit on my parenting. Uh, <laughs> but, and my daughter, I will say this, has always been my responsible one. You know, she's always been that 
that one in our family. But you do. It's just because, again, you just want your kids to live this really, a life that's great for them, even though it's not your life. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's all you really want. I'm with you. I'm not a tear person. Like, I don't tear up. But I will say there have been moments during this planning that I overcome with emotion. And I worry about the day because <laughs> I think, wait, is this really inside me? Like, I don't know. This is so not me. But the dress was one. I cried with the dress. Um, I cried the other, just the other night. We were talking about how I'm going in town one day earlier than the rest of my family. And she's going to be there. And I said, we could stay in the hotel together. And she's like, oh, that could be like our last night together oh. and I and I just started crying on the oh. <laughs> I'm like what is wrong with me but I just you know and it's not our last night together like it's not the last yeah. time you see her but it is like that moment I suddenly had that moment where I just flashed back to the times when we would watch Lizzie McGuire you know in sleeping bags and snacks on the family room floor mm -hmm. and it's like gosh it's weird but it's great yeah. like I yeah. can't explain how both of those emotions can live at the same time but they do yeah yeah, Katie, how about yourself? Yeah, just a sense of peace that, you know, you've raised them well and they picked good spouses and, um, and they're happy and they're mm -hmm. well-rounded and, um, and they're a good example to their friends because we're living in a time that people are not getting married. Yeah. So that, that's, um, I don't know. Yeah, it's like a sense of peace. I, it, uh, and the day of my son's, I just kept saying, it's such a joyful day, such a joyful day. And the day for my daughter, too, to see her up there, you know, on the altar and just kneeling, she had her head on his, on his shoulder at one point. I'm like, thank you. No, it's just yeah. wonderful. No. Yeah, and I want to echo both of you. I mean, I think just seeing your kids happy, you're only as happy <sighs> as your saddest um, child. Yep. So to see them all happy mm. just makes a mom heart just, you know, grow three times bigger. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so true. Yeah, just the, the small touches and my daughter just went somewhere and she came home and it wasn't the experience she thought it was going to be and she just, she called and said, thank you for raising me the way you raised me. Mm. Thank you for that. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. that's so. great. Mm -hmm. I, um, Christopher uh, has a couple of jobs. He's doing COD for um, the first year and then going to be transferring to Palmer because he's going to become a chiropractor. And he oh. got he delivers for a Chinese restaurant in town. And so he called me and he said, I said, hey, um, I just got to work. Um, I get a 20% discount. Did you and Jason want me to get anything for you before I come home? We didn't really want anything, but we were like, this is so nice. Like, sure, pick up some fried rice, <laughs> right? And, um, and so... He then leaves work, goes to Meyer to pick up something for, and calls again. I'm like, hey, bud, what's up? He's like, well, I'm at oh, Meyer. Did you need store. anything? Nice. And I, Jason can hear me, and yes. he's like whispering. He's like, tell him thank you, you know? Right. Very and then he thoughtful. comes home with food. Oh, I still have to pay him back. I'll pay you back, Christopher, I promise. <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyway, I talk about not having a, a tear gene, and in the last episode we just taped, I cried talking about my children. So I'm sure when my time for weddings hit, I, uh, I will find all those those extra tear ducts that have been locked away for a really long time. <laughs> yeah, I might be a really ugly hot mess at my daughter's wedding, but I'll send pictures yeah. to all of you. The, the, <laughs> just don't ugly cry. Yeah. <laughs> you can have tears, just don't ugly just cry. Just don't ugly cry. <laughs> yes. Duly noted. Yes. I'm keeping that in my head. Thank you to Patty, Linda, and Katie for sharing your mother the bride or mother the groom stories and your perspectives on the role you played in your kid's special day or planning of it. Sounds like an exciting time with a dash of stress thrown in just for good measure. <laughs> Thank you for watching the Moms Network and remember, you are always invited. Thank you. This episode of the Moms Network is brought to you by co-sponsors, Belgio's Catering and Dieta's Bakery.